Um, the last person in our line here is Mr. Chuck Turner. Uh, He's here to deliver to a letter on behalf of eight Boston City Councilors. How can I get this letter to him? I don't know. Maybe he wants to post it. No, wait. I've got a letter here for you. He's from the Boston City Council. we can see is that there's no respect for anyone. That is, when, a, um, when an elected official brings a letter signed by eight Boston City Councilors raising an issue about Harvard University that happens to play a major role in taking land in Boston, yep. and we're refused, and we're refused admission even to give him a letter, that says that they have no respect. Uh, what I want to do is to, uh, one, just read this letter to you so that you understand that the... <laughs> that eight of the 12 Boston City Councilors stand solemnly with you, and then I'd like to make a short statement. Let me put on my glasses. <laughs> <laughs> Some place. <laughs> Dear President Bach and members of the Harvard administration, we are writing as members of the Boston City Council in support of the city security guards campaign for better wages and fairer working conditions on your campus. As the elected, as the elected representatives of many of the guards at Harvard, we are appalled by the difficulties they face in procuring basic necessities and for themselves and their families. The guards' current wages of $12.68 per hour are simply unacceptable in a city with a as high a cost of living as Boston and Cambridge. As Boston City Councilors, it is clear to us that by denying its responsibility to campus workers, Harvard is simply shifting the burden of its labor cost onto the city and onto the taxpayers. We are outraged that Harvard would pursue a policy that siphons resources away from the low income urban residents who need it most and into the accounts of the wealthiest university in the world. We are aware of your claims to neutrality and firmly reject them. The facts show that Harvard not only has the power to intervene, but also has set the precedent of intervening in the negotiations of others of its vendors. The university, the university should not be allowed to alternatively proclaim and then deny its power and influence at its own convenience. Moreover, we recognize that this campus is only one worksite out of the many in the city that are staffed by allied Barton employees. Your decision will have a significant impact on the ability of all these workers to exercise their rights to good jobs. That fact cannot be ignored in your deliberations. Therefore, we call on you to make the responsible, moral, and ethical decision. We call on you to endorse the demands of your security guards and to publicly insist that your contractors uphold reasonable, fair employment standards. And this letter is signed by, by myself, by Felix Arroyo, Counselor-at-Large, Sam Yoon, 
Counselor at Large, Stephen Murphy, Counselor at Large, Michael Flaherty, Counselor at Large, Charles Yancey from the District of Mattapan, Dorchester, Michael Ross from Mission Hill, Back Bay, Beacon Hill, Maureen Feeney from Dorchester. These <laughs> Eight of the 12 city councilors felt that it is essential that we stand with you in the struggle for equity and justice, economic justice, particularly here on Harvard's campus. We are, we are frustrated. We are frustrated as representatives of the city of Boston that Harvard doesn't pay its fair share of property taxes in Boston Cambridge or other cities where it has residencies. As, as a property holder, it has the uh, who is a non-profit, it has the legal right not to pay property taxes. But as one of the wealthier universities in the world, it has a moral and economic responsibility not only to pay its workers at a fair, reasonable, and economic rate of pay, but also give taxes to the cities in which it operates that enable them to provide resources for the people of our cities. Let, let me close by saying that when I was a student here, I didn't realize as well that there are two educations that are essential to being a fully realized human being on this earth. One education is an intellectual education, an indication that trains your mind to be able to analyze, dissect the situations that you're facing. The other, the other intelligence is a moral intelligence an intelligence that enables you to see the unity between all human beings in all situations. An intelligence that helps you to understand how to operate as a full human being, recognizing our relationship to all other human beings and all elements on this earth. Unfortunately, unfortunately, Harvard is only able to give an education that focuses on intellectual qualities. It is demonstrating that it has no capacity to educate anyone around the question of moral intelligence. If it had that capacity, if it had the capacity to do education around moral intelligence, we would either see those teachers lined up with us, demanding that the president meet with all of us to do the right thing, to do the moral thing. But we don't see the teachers and the administrators streaming out of the buildings at Harvard to support, to support the students who are here. What that says to me, brothers and sisters, is that you are the moral teachers at this university, that you are providing the leadership for this administration and these teachers to understand what it means to be human beings, understand what it means to have compassion and concern, what it means to sacrifice yourself and your interest in the interest of all of us because you understand that we are all one brothers and sisters it's essential that you keep up the struggle not just for the security guards but to cr increase the potential for even the administrators and professors and others at harvard to develop their moral intellect they haven't developed it, but the potential is there. The potential is there. But in order to grow, they're going to need to be challenged. And so all I, I want to do is to say thank you for standing up for the workers. Thank you for challenging the leadership of this university to begin to recognize its moral responsibilities. Because when you get adults with a lot of money, and with a belief in their intellectual capacity and no moral values, you get chaos. Thank you.